And welcome back to Ramadan Reflections for 2024. This year we embark on a profound journey of discovery with our theme, Quranic Gems, Unraveling the Merits of Imam Ali, peace be upon him, in the Book of Allah, the Quran. Throughout the month of Ramadan, join us as we explore the verses of the Noble Quran that illuminate the virtues and merits of Imam Ali, peace be upon him, the beloved cousin and son-in-law of the Prophet Muhammad, Peace be upon him and his family. Each day we will delve into a new Quranic verse, seeking to uncover the timeless wisdom and guidance encapsulated within, and reflecting on its significance in the context of Imam Ali, peace be upon him, and his life and teachings. We invite you to be a part of this enriching journey of spiritual reflection and enlightenment. Remember to, remember to check back daily for the latest reflection as we unravel the treasures of the Qur'an together. If you find our content beneficial, we encourage you to engage with us by liking the video, leaving your thoughts in the comments and sharing it with others and subscribing to our channel if you haven't already done so. Together, let us make the most of this blessed month of Ramadan by deepening our understanding of the Qur'an and the legacy of Imam Ali, peace be upon him. Today, as we continue in the blessed month of Ramadan for the third day, we turn our focus to yet another verse of the Noble Qur'an. In Surah Al-Fatiha, chapter 1, verses number 6 and 7, which we repeat multiple times every day, Allah says, Guide us too and keep us on the straight path, the path of those whom you have favored, not of those who have incurred your wrath, your punishment and condemnation, nor of those who are astray. Now, these verses, they hold profound significance in relation to Imam Ali, peace be upon him, the cousin the son-in-law and the successor of the Prophet Muhammad, may God bless him and his family. After submitting to the Lord, that is, after submitting to Allah and reaching the stage of, serv of servitude, seeking assistance and seeking refuge in his pure essence, the primary request of the servant is to be guided onto the right path, the path of purity and goodness, the path of justice and fairness, and the path of faith and righteous deeds. This is so that Allah, who has bestowed all blessings upon that person, may also increase the blessing of guidance upon him. Although a person may be a believer and may be familiar with Allah in, in those conditions of belief, it's always possible that this blessing may be taken away from them due to their own actions, causing them to be diverted from the straight path and become misguided and deviants within Islam or falling outside of Islam. And therefore we ask Allah at least 10 times every day to prevent us from slipping and deviating off of the right path. Furthermore, this straight path that we're looking for, which is the path of the truth, it has various levels and degrees that not all individuals are equal in traversing. No matter how much one progresses through these levels, there are still higher degrees that a person with faith should ask Allah for help to guide them towards. Now people often ask, why do we continuously seek guidance from Allah on the straight path? If we're not astray, we're Muslims, aren't we? We're already on Saratul Mustaqim, on the straight path. Well, in response, we can say that at every moment, there's a fear of slipping and deviating from the path of guidance. We're surrounded by sin and temptation. Therefore, we have to surrender ourselves to the Lord and continuously request Him to help us keep steadfast on the right path. We can't forget that our existence and all of the divine gifts come to us every moment from Allah. Our existence and that of all beings are like light bulbs. If we see the light of a bulb spreading evenly, it's because every moment it receives power from the source. Similarly, every moment new light is produced by the power source and delivered to the bulb through the wires. Our existence is like the light of these bulbs. 
appearing as a continuous entity, yet in reality, every moment a new existence from the source of the Creator arrives. Therefore, just as every moment brings us a new existence, we also need new guidance. It's evident that if obstacles arise in our spiritual connection with Allah, such as sins, they sever the connection from that source of guidance, instantly diverting us from the straight path. Now, let me wrap it up here and move into the next stage of our discussion. Because people may wonder, there are 1.8 billion Muslims on this planet and we don't all follow the same version of Islam. We all claim to be Muslims and we all claim to follow the straight path. So which of these paths is the actual straight path? And how do we differentiate the straight path from others which may be diverting us from Allah and leading us into another direction and path? Well, it's very easy for me to sit here and tell you that Imam Ali, peace be upon him, revered as the epitome of righteousness and guidance. It's very easy for me to say that he embodies the essence of the straight path described in this verse or in these verses. Because we know that throughout his life, he steadfastly adhered to the teachings of Islam and remained unwavering in his commitment to justice, truth, and piety. Imam Ali, salam, his unwavering devotion to Allah and his exemplary conduct earned him the favor and approval of Allah, making him a beacon of guidance for believers seeking to follow this straight path. His life serves as a model for Muslims striving to emulate the righteous predecessors mentioned in these verses. Moreover, Imam Ali al-Islam, his steadfastness in upholding the principles of Islam and resisting deviation and falsehood aligns perfectly with the plea in this verse to be guided away from the paths of those who have incurred Allah's wrath and those who are astray. His unwavering faith and steadfastness serve as a source of inspiration and guidance for Muslims seeking to navigate the complexities of life and remain steadfast on the straight path. In essence, Imam Ali, peace be upon him, his life and teachings exemplify the essence of the straight path described in these verses under review. Now, how do we prove this? How can I sit here and safely say that the following, that following Imam Ali, peace be upon him, is the straight path? And that we don't aim to follow other people around the Prophet, such as his companions, some of whom were very good. And we don't believe that following them will get us to the straight path. Now, as we said yesterday, the name of Imam Ali is not directly mentioned in the Quran, nor in the verse we are reviewing today. And again, that is where the hadith come into play. Given that the Prophet and the Imams of Ahlul Bayt, peace be upon all of them, are the rightful interpreters of the Quran, we must go to their door of guidance to see how they explain the verses of the Qur'an. And in looking at the verse under review for today, or rather the verses under review, we come across the following narration which adds further clarity. And it's stated in the hadith from Abu Ja'far, Imam al-Baqir, peace be upon him, who said, Allah revealed to his Prophet, Hold fast to what has been revealed to you. Indeed, you are upon a straight path. The Imam then said, Verily you, are upon the guardianship of Ali, and Ali is the straight path. Thus, the straight path, brothers and sisters, is nothing other than following Imam Ali, peace be upon him. Not that he is independent of the Prophet, don't get me wrong. Not that he is independent of Allah, don't get me wrong. But rather, following Imam Ali will get us to the Prophet. And getting to the Prophet through Imam Ali is the only way to get us back to Allah and to understand and to follow the proper interpretation of and understanding of Islam. Let me now come to some practical tips for the topic of today for our Ramadan reflections, as well as a closing reflection and a final thought to end the day. Point number one is divine guidance. Right? All beings are guided along the path determined by Allah's will. A heartfelt plea for divine guidance is expressed where we say, O oh Allah, guide us on the path that you love. And for the Muslim nation, that is none other than the path which Imam Ali, peace be upon him, and his immaculate family members tread upon. Point number two is the need for role models. Humans are acknowledged to require role models for their moral and spiritual development. Prophets, martyrs, truthful individuals, and the righteous are cited as exemplary models of humanity. And at the peak of our role model, after the Prophet, obviously, is none other than the straight path. Imam Ali, peace be upon him. Point number three is resilience through aversion to wrongdoing. 
expressing aversion towards those who incur divine wrath and those who go astray is highlighted in this passage. This aversion fosters resilience and steadfastness within the Islamic community, preventing the acceptance of a rule by those who deviate from the right path. Most notably, those who opposed Imam Ali, peace be upon him, in any way, in word or in deed, and those who stood against him from the very days of the death of the Messenger of Allah. As a closing reflection, brothers and sisters, I conclude by saying that seeking divine guidance and emulating the righteous role models are foundational to living a life aligned with Allah's will. Through prayer, reflection, and adherence to moral principles, we can strengthen our connection with the divine and navigate the challenges of life with steadfastness and resilience. As a final thought, let me leave you with this on the third day of the month of Ramadan. Let us therefore strive to seek guidance from Allah, emulate the examples of righteous, pious individuals, and remain steadfast in upholding moral principles, fulfilling our purpose and finding solace in divine guidance. Until tomorrow and another day of Ramadan and our Ramadan reflections, we leave you with the words of peace. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.